Hey guys, Jay here. Uh, today I'll be scouting my area, so we'll call this Duck Hunting 101. First tip to a successful duck hunt, especially early season, is to scout the area you're going to hunt. Uh, typically, in the area that I'm hunting early in the season, it's local birds, and the majority of those local birds are teal. Fast moving, super tasty little birds. Uh, there's also uh, a lot of uh, diver ducks and uh, a good variety and uh, I'm going to scout to see what's here and just have an idea so I know how to set up when the season opens. Alright, so let's get at it. Okay guys, another tip for hunting, whether it be waterfowl or big game, and I do them all, is uh, respect the farmer, respect the land. If you've got permission or you have access to public land and the farmer's also leasing it and he's required by law, at least here in Canada, uh, if he's got livestock out here, he has to have a gated property so the livestock's not going everywhere and run it roaming free. So you as a hunter, number one is respect that farmer's property and livestock. So for example, I'm going to go through this gate, I'm going to open it up, go through, and I'm going to close it right away. I'm not going to leave it open. This makes for great relations and more hunting opportunities. Okay guys, so I'm through the gate, which I've closed behind me. I have another tip before I start scouting, and that is to practice. Practice your calls. Practice your calling techniques. You don't have to be perfect or a pro. I certainly am not. Uh, but if you can mimic a duck, make a quack sound or, or a feeding call, uh, you will have a better chance of bringing those ducks in, whether you're hunting over deeks or past shooting. Uh, keep in mind, a duck is flying so fast uh, in the air, the wind blowing by its ears, it may not catch all the call, even if it's a perfect call. But if you can get their attention, to get them to come back, do another circle, or even better, commit, you will improve your, your chances for success. So again, guys, practice. Practice your calling. Don't wait till opening morning to blow into those reeds. Hey guys, I'm here in the marsh now, and you can hear the ducks. This is just awesome. Uh, look behind me, you can see it's a very big marsh. It's certainly changed. Uh, there's a lot less water than there was here last year. So it will be a different hunt, and this is why scouting is probably the most important tip to duck hunting or any kind of hunting, whether you're a new hunter or a veteran or seasoned hunter, and that is you need to check out the area you're hunting. Have an idea of how it is, where the animals or the ducks are in this case, so you can come up with a proper plan on how to hunt the area to, to ultimately bring success and bag limits. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear or see those guys, but there is... A very healthy, oh, there's a very healthy duck population out here, and you can hear them. There's all kinds of birds. But boy, that's a good cluster right over there. This is another reason why scouting is so useful, guys. Can you hear that chatter? That's the ducks. And I'm telling you, you hear that, that that's a good way for you to help with your practice on your calls. You can hear how they're talking and how they're communicating and that's what you want to try to replicate. There's another group of birds here. I'm not sure how this is turning out. I got the sun in my eyes, but certainly healthy looking group of birds. And they're very chatty, very chatty. I love it guys, I love it. Well, the locals know I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Waterbird is telling everybody, run, big bad hunter. Another comment I could make or a point I could make about me scouting is I'm doing this early. Like I'm not doing it the day before or even a couple of days before. These birds are going to have like about a week and a half to settle back in because I'm probably spooking up quite a few of them. If not all of them, even though I'm wearing camouflage, my favorite color in the world. But like I say, do this early. Not too early, but not too late. Uh, is anything you spooked up, you want them to settle back in and forget all about your presence in the area. So looking at this spot here, this tells me this might be a pretty good spot to set up my deeks. I got good vegetation and cover. It's also a good transition point from uh, the big water. Uh, you know, it gives them a, a sheltered area. They're already obviously using it. They're here, and uh, yeah, 
I really think this might be where I'm going to set up for the reasons I said. Uh, there's already birds here. It's a good transition point from the big water, especially on a windy day. They'll come into here for cover, and with there being cover, that means there's cover for me, the hunter. So this might be where I set up based on my scouting so far. But again, I wouldn't know this if I hadn't been scouting. Okay, so now I'm at a spot where I did a lot of my hunting last year, and it was very productive. I'm, I know there's birds in it because I've heard a couple. I just don't know how many. So I'm just going to try to sneak over the ridge just to see if I can get a look, and uh, we'll see what's there. Okay, so there they are. Some local birds. Those are definitely teal. But uh, this pond here, a third of it's dried up. So I'm going to back out of this spot. I'm probably going to hunt this spot again because I, I really know how to get here quick and easy. Nice to see there's some birds here, but I'm going to try to back out so I don't spook them. Okay, so I'm just walking along the shoreline here, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's a very big body of water, and it kind of leaks and cracks into the farmland here, which is kind of flooded out in a lot of spots. But uh, on the shoreline here, even out there, I've got sandbars that have were not there last year that I, I would probably be able to set up on, which is interesting. Um, certainly lots of birds. You can see there's a few way out there. That flock might be geese, but uh, I'm just going to keep moving on and checking out the area. Mr. Froggy. Okay, so maybe that's a good point for me to make is just over here just now, there was uh, a hen mallard with her chicks from the earlier part of the summer. And to the left of her was a few teal. And that's very much how I would set up my spread. I would use mallard decoys. I have newer ones. And then the older mallard ones that I have that are now faded and lost their paint, they look more like bluebills. And uh, last year I was throwing them out five to 10 feet away from the mallard spread. And I was seeing more teal come in. And then I actually added to that, I added four floater geese to it. And I was getting all kinds of birds to come in. And uh, it seemed to really give me more opportunities for more birds. So that's a tip. Um, maybe you might find it useful. It certainly is how I continue to hunt now and it, it's very effective. Okay guys, for tip number three, I'd say go out and shoot often. Really get familiar with your firearm. Develop that muscle memory so that the shooting becomes almost second nature. If you have a quicker, smoother gun mount and quicker target acquisition, you're going to make that shot more times than not, and you'll have a lot more confidence when you're out in the field. So I guess to recap uh, Duck Hunting 101, my top three pieces of advice would be scout your location. Know where the birds are and the type of environment you're going to be hunting, because it does change. Tip number two would be to practice your call. Practice your calling. You will get better. And tip number three would be to shoot and shoot often, just to develop that muscle memory. If you have any suggestions or any comments, please put them down below. Please like, please subscribe, and thanks for watching.